Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well. My name is Blake. I'm the owner and operator of Schneider Hand Sounds, and today we're going to do a tutorial in Logic Pro X on the software instruments. This is just going to cover the basics of, the, of using the software instruments. For, we're going to create a track, select the instrument that we want, record, quantize, and loop it to match the beat that we have already imported onto this track. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a track. Now there's a few ways we can do this. Um, let's go to the top here, click track, and we'll see new tracks and we see new software instrument tracks. Now I always recommend learning the key commands when possible because if you can save time with navigation, that just adds that time to mixing and other important parts of your session. Time is very important, so I always try to learn key commands as much as possible. So, like I said, we have new tracks, which is Option, Command, N, or new software instrument track, which is Option, Command, S. Um, for now, let's do Option, Command, S. So that created a instrument track right here. Um, as you can see, this instrument tab is grayed out. That means we still have to select an instrument to go with. So I want to, out of these are the different uh, instruments by the way that show up. Um, if you have plugins or third party um, virtual instruments, these will show up down here. And so let's just choose a vintage, let's do electric piano. Okay, we're gonna do in stereo. So let's click that. We'll close this out real quick. So I actually wanna show you something. Um, a lot of you using this, if you select the create, if you create a software instrument track, so if we do Option Command S, a lot of times what will happen is they'll have this tab open, the library tab, and they'll be uh, inclined to select the instrument through this uh, method. I, I typically recommend against it, and here's why. So let's say we have a piano, right? Let's say we want to do a piano. Um, let's select the Yamaha Grand Piano. Now what you'll see is that it loads the instrument in the Instrument tab right here, but it also adds all these extra effects and processors that we don't really, that we might not actually want. Um, it has an EQ that's already set, it has a compressor and tape delay. Now this does help us get the desired sound of the preset here, but this also adds a lot of strain on the CPU. So if you're not in need of this or you don't want to put a lot of strain on the CPU, I would suggest choosing the synth first via going to this drop down menu, then selecting the, sam the sampler or the um, synthesizer that you want, and then add the desired um, effects later. So let's go back to that uh, instrument here. So we have the electric piano set up, and let's go ahead and name this piano. So you just click on the name, type it in, and then hit enter. Okay, so now that we have our instrument selected, we now want to be able to play it. Um, if you have a MIDI keyboard already plugged in, then you're good to go. However, if you're not using a MIDI keyboard or don't have access to one, Logic has a great feature called musical typing. Um, we can hit command K, and that pulls up the musical typing piano. The menu is under window, and you can also click on it uh, down here. So right, so right here is where you would click it. Um, so we have musical typing piano, and as you can see, it's set up just like a MIDI controller. So you have your 25 keys, and then you have your pitch bend controls, your modulation controls, sustain, octave controls here, and velocity controls. So now that we have that, we should, if you just type in the, the keyboard here, we now have sound. So just make sure that the recording button is armed if you want to audition and hear before you record. So now that we have what we want, let's go ahead and record. I want to take this off here. Just go ahead and click make sure that's off. Um, this up here is actually just a loop record um, and how you use this is if it's not already highlighted you just click on up here and you can drag it click hold and drag left and right depending on how much you want to do it and what this will do is it'll just basically it'll play in a continuous loop and you can use that for loop recording or just uh, listening to a loop over and over again so we're gonna go ahead and just click on it to 
disable it. Then we'll hit uh, enter to go to the beginning. And then we'll hit R to record and we'll go ahead and record a quick part. Alright, so now that that's recorded, I'm going to go ahead and just trim this, move, scooch this back here. So we just uh, click on the very edge in the middle when you see the symbol, and then you drag back. We'll drag this back to the 7 here. So, now that we have this section set up, I actually want to uh, make sure that everything's in time. Because if we double click on this, we can see it in a grid form down at the bottom here. It's actually... Uh, see if we can raise this up a little bit. So we have this set up. This is basically a grid of what we just played on the keyboard. So as you can see, it's not perfectly lined up um, because I didn't play perfectly in time, but we can easily fix this with quantization. So how we do this is we make sure that our uh, track that we want fixed is uh, highlighted. And then we'll go to Region, go to Quantize, and then we will select the quantization that we actually want. Um, for this one, I want eighth notes. So to quantize it to uh, one eighth notes. And also, just in case any of you can't see this section up here, um, make sure check to see if your Inspector tab is highlighted or not. When I click on it and it's no longer active, you can see that that whole area is gone. We just go here, click Inspector, and now you can see Regions and Track Info. Um, so now that we have the quantization active, we should now be able to play it back and it should be in perfect time. Excellent. So we have it completely in time now, so that should uh, flow with the beat very nicely. So now what we want to do is see if we can loop this just to the very end here. Um, so what we'll do is, if you go to the track again, go ahead and select it. In the top right corner, you'll see the little loop symbol up here. So what that means is you can click, hold, and drag, and loop it to the desired length that you want. So once the loop has reached the end of its cycle, you'll see right here, for example, that it divots here. So that means that the loop cycle ends and then it'll restart the loop again. So I'm going to go ahead, extend that out. And then I'm going to also go ahead and just go ahead and extend this drum loop out just a little bit. So now that they're lined up nicely. So now if we hit return, go ahead and hit play. Now we should be seeing it, we should hear it uh, play all the way through. Excellent. So again, nothing too fancy here, just uh, functionality and we're just looking at the basics here. So we created the track, we selected the instrument that we wanted, and we were able to record, quantize, and loop the desired selection. Um, last thing that I would like to show that may be helpful for some of you, um, when you after you select your um, desired instrument that you want, whether it's a synth or the piano, um, let's let's use the let's use this for the example. Okay, so you see up here that we have the uh, interface for the electric piano. So you can obviously control it um, how you would like. So you have the volume, you have the bass, you have the treble, gain, all that stuff. There's also another window here. Um, you can click on the smart controls and what it kind of does is give you almost like a almost like a shortcut or um, just kind of a hot key controls where you can access them at the bottom instead of having to open up the window. Um, it might not always give you the most uh, extensive of controls, 
Um, for example, I know with the ES2, if we go to the ES2, for example, you have a very large amount of controls that you can work with here. However, if I say went to, like, let's say we go to synth brass, right? We create a synth brass, and now we go to the smart controls. Now we're much more limited as far as what we can do with it. Um, so those are kind of the, the most used controls put at the bottom there for quick access. That's all really I, I have for you today. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. Thank you so much for checking out the video. If you have any experience using Logic yourself, let us know in the comments what you think. As well as if you have any questions, feel free to ask away in the comments below. I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. It definitely helps me filter out the content for future videos. And as always, subscribe to stay current on the future topics and videos. And until next time, y'all have a good one.